Magandang araw po sa inyo. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hanggan. Ito ang Pinyo Talks. Ako nga po pala si Karen Dibushan at ako ang inyong learning from homebody para sa episode na ito. When I was asked to do this talk, I can't find anything that might be relevant to you. I did graduated from PNU Lab School in elementary and then high school in Agusansur National High School and then moved to Manila to do my medical school. So I decided to tell you a story about myself and my squiggly career with the hope that you might find a couple of ideas or lesson for your future careers too. I was born in a very competitive family. Both my parents have their stories of growing up with no luxuries in life, struggling to put themselves into school and taking on scholarships to educate themselves in the top universities of the country until finding a job and earning enough money to provide for their family. I am constantly reminded that I had it easier than them, that I don't have to struggle as much, and that all I need to do is work hard towards what I want to do in life. Therefore, from a very young age, I already had an ambition to climb the ladder and have a successful career. We had enough then so I can go to good schools. And if I really work hard, I can be who I want to be, which was to become a doctor, a surgeon at that, or to become a scientist. I can say I did well in school. I did graduate from PNU in Mindanao. And then in high school, I discovered that I am good at this school thing, finishing top of my class. And to my surprise, I got into the intermed program of the University of the Philippines, where a select number of students can go straight from medicine or straight to medicine from after high school. The program offers six years of medicine and a year of internship compared to possible nine to 10 years of pre-med and medical school. So I began to think I'm really good at this school thing. I was both an ablation and a university scholar in UP and graduated valedictorian in my bachelor degree and salutatorian in med school. Not bad, I thought. Then I was motivated by how far and how fast I was progressing. And I thought that my road to the top would look something like a straight line going upwards. Fresh from uni, I was about getting into the best surgical program and earning my first salary. I was preoccupied by the thought of moving up the program until perhaps a chief residency position in my last residency year. And on the surface, everything seemed to be on track. But I started to get the sense that the ladder might actually be holding me back. The obvious next step wasn't always the most appealing. And it really got me excited about exploring opportunities that weren't necessarily based on what I have done before. I felt there's more to what my surgical curriculum has outlined for me. So I made a huge decision of quitting the program. And from then on, my career has started to look and feel much more like little squiggly lines. Careers used to be about climbing the ladder. It's linear, predictable, straightforward, and you knew what happened next. There is a standard curriculum and almost like a tick box of things to do to move up to the next step. On the other hand, a squiggly career is both full of uncertainty and full of possibility. Change is happening all the time. Sometimes it's safe, sometimes it's super scary. Some of it is in our control and some of it is not. Success is not one size fits all and all squiggles are as individual as we are. And again, for me, that meant a career where I finish a five-year residency program and gain fellowship in surgery and become a surgeon to moving to Australia and trying different possible expertise from critical care medicine to general practice and a whole, a whole variety of other things. 
When I first started the equivalent of residency training program for general practice, I found another interest, which was in skin. I thought then there was only one pathway and I had to focus on mo moving up one ladder at a time or one step at a time. So I did my own research about another program and I started curating my own curriculum. Before I became a fellow in general practice, I already gained a couple of diplomas in dermatology, in child health, and in women's health. Then while I was practicing in general practice in general dermatology, I thought aesthetics seems appealing. I looked into it and again created my own pathway to learn and develop my skills in the field. Today, I practice as a skin cancer specialist and surgeon in most days, and I also perform cosmetic procedures like Botox, fillers, lasers, and mini facelifts on the side. I also eventually discovered that I can teach, so I became a medical educator. I now specialize in fellowship exam preparation and help prepare candidates for the rigorous MCQ and OSCE examination of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. And then I realized why not progress into an, to becoming an examiner of the college. And so I do, I do that now as well. I'd like to share my squiggly career to all of you to perhaps give you an inspiration in your future careers. And to take an inspiration as well, um, to be a little bit more exploratory in terms of what you can do. So the legacy of the ladder is all around us. It starts in school, then in the companies that we work and in the conversations that we have. It sounds like a question we are asked at a very young age. Anong gusto mong, paglaki, anong gusto mong maging paglaki mo? As if implying we have to focus on that one ambition. Or a job interview question, where do you see yourself in five years? And waiting for a standard answer which is climbing up the steps to the top of the company. It is in the unfairness of learning being unlocked only once you reach a certain level of an organization. Career ladders were created as a way to manage and motivate a whole new generation of workers in the early 1900s. But the world of conformity and control for over 100 years ago is almost unrecognizable today. Ladders are limiting. They limit learning and they limit opportunity. The future will be made up of people who never stop learning and who are open to the opportunities that come their way. We are now living in the world of frequent movement between roles, industries, locations, and of course, careers. 2020 has disrupted the way that all of us work and none of us know what will happen next. But one thing we can be confident about is that the ladder is a redundant concept of career. Without realizing it, some of us use, some of us, have already sculpted our career to match our interests. For example, actors and actresses now realize that they can use other platforms, including that of social media or YouTube, for example. Teachers realize that physical classrooms are not always necessary to teach, and even the ones who are re reluctant to use digital technology are now using it and are very, very good at it. There's one teacher that I saw in Facebook uh, who is teaching music in a very funny way and one who uploads teaching videos which makes learning simpler and easier to understand. Squiggly career begins with answering some important questions. What am I good at? What are my strengths? What are my values? What do I stand for? What is holding me back? what motivates me, and where do I want to go in the future. Then, the most important step is to rede redefine our relationship with the learning. In this day and age, we all have the chance to create our own curriculums. We can be very creative with what that looks like. 
reading traditional books, ebooks, blogs, podcasts, talks like these are all valuable resources. Therefore, your learning is very much personal to you. And the good news is, your development is no longer always dependent on other people, nor what you learn inside the classroom. Our learning should not be limited by the level that we reach in an organization, or for you students, the level you reach in school. Learning is no longer available to the fortunate few. It's not the responsibility of a single department, or it doesn't just happen when you go on a course or a training program. In a ladder-like command and control environment, we rely on others for our personal and professional development. We were told what to do, where to go, and there was little opportunity to deviate from the norm. On the other hand, if we, if we adopt this concept of squiggly careers, we need a more personalized framework that allows for the different motivations and definitions of success. We need to take ownership of our career development. And if we really want to make the most of everything that this concept of squiggles has to offer, we must practice self-awareness and commit to lifelong learning. With this concept, not only does the role of the individual changed, but also the role of the teachers and leaders, from them telling and directing, to them supporting, guiding, and coaching. Self-awareness must be encouraged and that everyone should be accountable for their own development. At the end, no one has a monopoly on wisdom. Everybody is a learner and everybody is a teacher. When we embark in the world of squiggly career, we also need to change our understanding of progression. We are always familiar with the career ladder. We are motivated in ascending the ladder with only one direction in mind, going, what? going up one step at a time. If progression purely means promotion, we miss out on so many opportunities that are all around us. Not only that, we miss out on the joy of trying new things, the sweet reward of doing what we actually like doing, and the pride and the excitement of living out your own unique career. Exploring our work career possibilities increases our resilience. It gives us more options. It gives us freedom and fulfillment. And once we take our first step into the classroom on our first day of school, Many of us forget to take a moment to think about how we can change and be flexible with our career. We sometimes think about ideas, and because the expectation is for us to take a straight linear path, we discount so many other career possibilities. It is now the time to explore. It might be an amb ambitious possibility that you did not feel ready yet at the time, or perhaps it's the fit pivot that feels interesting, but you think it's a bit out of reach. Or maybe it's a dream that you've discounted all these years. The most important thing is that you give yourself permission to explore. Growing up, I knew only of one way to succeed. By 23 years old, I would have finished medical school. By 28, I would have been a surgeon. By 30, I would have been a fellow or a diplomat. And by 32, I would have a strong, solid surgical practice or would have been specializing in reconstructive surgery. Grand and ambitious. But looking back, how boring it would have been. When I finally broke free from the ladder, I came to realize I can do more and I can actually do what I want to do. I was finally happy and content. Now, if I may ask you, who among you are taking your degree because your parents told you to do so, or many of your family members have the same profession? How many of you are unhappy where you are but too scared to do something else? How many of you come in to attend lectures day in and day out 
like robots. Break the mold, as one famous Filipino comedian said. Embrace your uniqueness and adopt a squiggly career. There should be no pressure to fit a perfect mold. Be open about what you wanted to do and where you want to go, even if that's different to everybody else. In squiggly careers, there is no room for everybody to succeed. Or in squiggly careers, there is room for everybody to succeed. And no two squiggles are the same. When I adopted the concept of squiggles, I began to define my own success and took control of my career. And because my squiggly path is so different, I let go of comparing myself to anyone's ladder. And that, my friend, is the secret to contentment. It may be scary, yes, but believe me, once you start exploring, you find doors of opportunities. And not only that, you will have the confidence in opening that door. Some squiggles may be dead end, but the lessons you learn along the way are as useful when you continue to find another path. Success is not always de defined as reaching the top. Success is when you can finally be who you are and do what you love and be content of what you have achieved. That is my challenge to all of you, future le leaders and teachers of this country. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for listening to this talk. Please send any comments, questions and ideas about our topic today and don't forget to like and share this episode. Sa muli po, ako si Karen Gibushan at suma inyo ang Pinyo Talks. Dagang salamat.